Okay, so you can see the button there. Probably a gap. Yeah, so that's four wheel drive. So it's engaged. We've got four wheel drive. Ryan's Mobile One. So here's the iconic Nitro. We're going to go underneath. Yeah, that is the transfer case that you see here. Really little transfer case, but it does the job. It's not a very heavy unit, not a very heavy duty unit. And that's why it's got such a little actuator. It says model 143KA. And it just has on and off, two wheel drive and four wheel drive. So when you turn the key on this, you'll see that there's a serve four wheel drive light that comes on. We'll try it again. There it is, it takes the camera man. That's the first light that goes out. Well, it says serve four wheel drive. So this is a simple control. It goes from two wheel drive to four wheel drive lock. It's pretty basic. You can hear it click underneath. It just spits out a little thing. On the day that it was having problems, see the little four wheel drive light comes on. So the little four wheel drive light, you can see it's supposed to illuminate. It just pooped the bed. <laughs> it was on a second ago until I tried to film it. So we'll turn this off and turn it back on. Uh, but anyway, that little shift motor underneath, I had my wife shifting it and had the engine running and there we go. So, there you go, you heard it. The little so we're in four wheel drive now. So we'll fire it up and see if we can get the wheels to spin. See, I've got the wheel turned here, throw it in drive. And four wheel drive's working now. That's because I bought the new one. That's the way it goes. It was having problems and we had the serve four wheel drive light on, the orange one that goes out first. Uh, she put it in four wheel drive and it just wouldn't go at all. I mean it was just foobard. And like I say, we tested it on the lift and when I'd switch it to four wheel drive, just make this plastic popping grinding noise. Like nylon gear stripping. We'll zoom in here, I'll turn it back to two wheel drive. Two wheel drive's easy. And all it does is it just pushes that little button in and out. It's happy now. It went into four. Uh, but the whole thing, if, if the light's staying on and you unplug that little actuator, that's all they call it at the dealership, just the actuator. But if that light's staying on and you unplug it, it makes the light go out. So I think all the logic, all the control, everything's in that one little unit. So we're on the bench. It's going to be a little tricky to take apart. There's a lot of glue involved. So these all buckle together to hold it until the glue dries. Glue's a little gummy. It should pull apart. So I'm going to just take out a few of them. Boy, when these lock up and they're glued together, there's no going back. All right, well, let's see if we can get this to separate. If you were to just put a whole bunch of stuff in there and hold it, I bet it would work. It's coming apart. That's it. So my guess is if Dorman made, I was leave everything up to them. They make everything. So what I'm looking for is something that's cracked or popped in these nylon gears. I heard a plastic popping noise, but it was actually the case of the actuator, and it was caused by resistance in the transfer case. The motor's good. This is a relay right here. It's made in the Philippines. Anyway, here's all your input. Here's uh, the sensors. And then on the other side of the board, you should see some circuits or some kind of uh, business getting to the motor. You got all kinds of computer control stuff here. Just real basic. And then uh, the more that you turn this little guy, the more it spits that in or out just a little bit. You can see it's got some gear reduction going on. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten turns, and it's sticking out quite a bit. We go back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten turns. A little bit more for luck, and it's back about the thickness of my finger. So that's all it does. This gear looks fine. I'd imagine it's a broken gear, these little nylon gears or whatever they're made of. So I'm looking, and I'm not seeing anything. I wonder if there's something in the transfer case uh, that causes resistance to make it go bang. So this is uh, the seal that keeps it from leaking. So this is flooded with transmission fluid. It's pretty well lubricated. It's just a screw. So there's a plate or something in the bottom of that that pushes the spring and pushes this up. I can't believe they want so much money for this thing and nobody else has it. There's no aftermarket for it. The only place that had it was the uh, neighboring hub city for the west. Denver specifically. I think a lot higher of this than I did before and I think given the gears and the situation I don't think the glue is going to mess up the new one. I think I'm going to try it. This is the new one. I'm just going to pick the glue off and I think I'm just going to put it in and call it good. When I had it out 
I don't recall it ever going bang. It was only when it was in it went bang. We should pull the extra seal or whatever off of this. So it is just ugly. It is a mess. Look at all that goopy, goopy glue. I think if we can put it in and run it unloaded first, I think it'll be fine loaded. So I just take a little transmission fluid, put it on the O-ring here. And that way you don't get any binding. You can see that this is kind of beveled or sloped to help make things smooth. You'd be hard pressed to mess this up. Well, it's hard to find where the first thread is, but once you've got it, you've got it. So like I say, if you want that Sir four wheel drive light to turn off, pretty much all you gotta do is unplug this thing. And if it doesn't work, do it a couple more times and it seems to clear it. All right, so I pull this off the new one. We're gonna plug the old one. I just threw it together real quick. Uh, key on. Is it in two or four? Two. All right, four. Two. Four. Two. Thing works like a champ now. Is the serve four wheel drive light on or off? Off. See why I spend all that money? So we'll put it on this. See if the new one goes bang. Like I say, everything was smooth on the transfer case side. All right, uh, what are you in, two or four? Don't change anything, just tell me where it is. Okay, good, that's where it's supposed to be. All right, four. Ooh, it sounded crunchy, huh? Two. Four. Two. Dude, that sounds solid and mean and aggressive. That's fixed. Is the light on or off? The serve four-wheel drive light is off? Yeah. Cool. There you go. Done deal. Let's rotate some tires and put it down. Uh, let's show the uh, let's show it in action. I'm gonna throw a hose on it. Go ahead and put it in drive. Alright, put on the brake. Go ahead and switch it to four-wheel drive. Let out the brake. Did you let out the brake? Something snapped. That scared me. Thought I just lost 400 bucks. All right, put on the brake. Switch it to two. Let out the brake. Is it in two? Okay, that's not good because uh, this is still driving. Something went snap. Okay, put it in uh, four. Let out the brake. Or uh, put on the brake. Put it in two. Let out the brake. It's always in four wheel drive now. Right, well, let's pull it out and compare and see where the shaft is because maybe the shaft is in the four wheel drive position. We don't know. So we are in two-wheel drive position. Fire it up, please. Uh, put it in drive. There it go, clunk. Let out the brake. So we are in two-wheel drive. All right, hold the brake. So I push the button in. Uh, let out the brake. Now we're in four-wheel drive. What happens if I just let go? It holds it. All right, push on the brake. Let out the brake. Oh, it didn't return. Brakes. Reverse. Let it, ooh, you hear it go pop, it pop back out. So that pop is a button in the back. Okay, so you can see the button there. Uh, slow it down to like five miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, so that's four wheel drive. Uh, go ahead and let it out. So it's engaged, we've got four wheel drive. Ooh, that's my bad. Go ahead and push the brakes. So it's going in and out, but maybe it was a problem with the transfer case. You can hear it go in and out. It's just hanging up. So all four wheels are spinning. If you look on the right side of the frame up here, in my finger wiggle, you can see all four wheels are going. Put on the brake, put it in park, drive. It went 
it's lit, now it should be in two. Go ahead and let out the brake. Yeah, now we're in two. You can see over here, again, the tire's just stationary. All right, I'm saying we're fixed, but something's funky in the transfer case. Let's have a round of applause for our lovely assistant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I pulled the plug out and it just started bleeding, like a little bloody nose or something. If you take your zip tie and just kind of flex it and bend it a little first, and then stick it in, that seems to help. You can see about where the fluid is. So the fluid's in good condition, it should be, because I changed it last year, year before last. I don't know why it's being sticky and weird. I'm wondering if it's sticking because it's getting stuck on the plate. Anyway, I want to put some extreme green on it. Extreme green is a high friction modifier. It's expensive stuff, but I've taken some, filled a syringe full of it. I don't want it to fall back out, because like I say, it is a little spendy, but it is freaking amazing. So we're going to shoot it in. Plug it in. I'm gonna put some right on the shaft too. I think that's where it needs to be the most. I have some in a spray, I'm just gonna spray it. So when that's extended, it should be good. I don't, oh, I got that all over the place. Whatever. I just wanna push it, oh yeah. <laughs> There's like zero drag on that now. Should have freaking done that to begin with. I'm like kicking myself. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this stuff. It's a multi-level marketing thing. I hate those things, but that's the way they do it. I'm not going to press you, but I will tell you, if you get this and you put it on like your screw drive pullers, you know, like a, a hub puller or a gear puller, put it on the threads of that tool, you'll be converted immediately. I mean, you try WD, you try anything you want, nothing works like this stuff. Uh, let's put this back in before everything goes away. But I bet that right there would have solved my problem better than the new $400 encoder motor. Live and learn. I just didn't know enough about these and that's why I'm making a video so that you guys can learn about it and save money. It's awesome to fix stuff. It's awesome to fix it right the first time. It's awesome to have all the information before you begin. You're welcome. The best way to say thanks is poke subscribe right in the face and then click the little bell. If you want to be notified, you can be notified too. Thanks. Bonus footage at the end.